This is my custom iPod. It's a fifth generation iPod video, and it's what I use when I want to take a step out of the world of smartphones and notifications and just focus on listening to some music. But when music isn't quite enough, it's also my Game Boy, so I've got an old school Pokemon game whenever I need a quick fix. Old iPods are great for both hardware and software mods, and I'll show you how I built my perfect iPod and how you can too. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do so so you don't miss any upcoming videos. So dig that old iPod out from your sock drawer and let's get right into it. It turns out that iPods are quite capable despite being announced over 20 years ago. iPods with hard drives built in, so basically not the iPod Nano line, can be easily opened up to replace the battery, replace the front and back plates for iPod videos, and upgrade to use massive SD cards. And not only that, nearly all iPods can run custom firmware. Even your grayscale iPod can play Doom. For me though, the iPod video is the perfect balance of payoff with hardware and software mods. Starting with some hardware mods, an iPod video can be easily opened up with just a pry tool from an iFixit toolkit. If you're planning to replace the battery, the battery kits often include some plastic tools, but I never find that they have quite enough leverage. The pry tool from iFixit is the way to go for sure. Once you've opened up the iPod, you can really choose how far you want to take the hardware mods from here. I always at the very least replace the battery and swap out the hard drive for an SD card. For this mod, I'm changing the front plate and the click wheel. After you seal the iPod back up, you could choose to just stop here. You've already got a great looking iPod with a ton of storage. But not us. We're going to take this a few steps further. Back in 2006, Apple released official third-party game support for four different iPod models. By the time games were sunset from the iTunes store in 2011, there were a total of 54 games available for purchase. With the iTunes store no longer allowing users to purchase games anymore, there are only 20 games that are fully playable today. But it's quite impressive for that time. These games came before the There's an App for That, and had some big name publishers like PopCap Games and EA. Apple even developed a few games of their own. Even though these games can't be officially acquired anymore, there's always a way. With some clever Google searching, you can find a zip with pretty much everything you need. One of the reasons the fifth generation iPod is the best device to mod is because it's the only one that has a modified firmware that can play these official iPod games. The app to load the custom firmware is a bit clunky, but you really just plug your iPod in, wait for it to be detected by the app, choose the modded firmware and hit go. It just takes a minute or so for the whole process to complete. From there, you can unzip the game files, drag and drop them to your iPod, disconnect your device, reboot, and you're good to go. So now that we've got official games installed, how do they feel? Well, game to game they do differ, but overall you can expect decently low frame rates and choppy animations and also awkward controls. But this is cool! I'm playing games on my iPod video. It's not the iPod games, it's the iPod video. Taking a look at Tetris, it works where you use the scroll wheel to move around and you click the forward and back buttons to rotate the piece. The middle button moves the piece down faster and the play pause button moves the piece down immediately. It's pretty clunky controls and it takes some time to get used to. I would have rather seen the middle button rotate the piece, but hey, what do I know? Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man are weird ones. They rely on tapping the click wheel, not pressing, to use it as a joystick. It's weird that you have a little view on the right that shows what direction it's registering taps as. For something that requires precision, it really shows that the click wheel isn't great for it.
Texas Hold'em is actually a game developed by Apple, but it features super low frame rates and pretty slow gameplay. Given the simplicity of Texas Hold'em, it actually controls fine. You usually have three options when it's your turn, and you can just scroll to the option and hit the middle button to select. A little off topic, but Apple actually released a Texas Hold'em app for iOS, and it's funny to see that the spade spinner made it over from the iPod game to the iOS game, along with the corny page turn animation. Of course, it runs much smoother on iOS. Vortex is another Apple-made game, and eventually shipped for free with later generation iPods. This one is one of the best games you can actually get for the iPod. It's really just a brick breaker game, but because you're rotating it in a circle, it actually fits the click wheel the best. Gameplay is smooth, and this is definitely actually an addicting game. So we've got the official iPod Store games running on the iPod, but I showed you a Game Boy game at the beginning of this video. Don't worry, we're almost there. In addition to the modded firmware we just installed, we can install another custom firmware that runs on top of it called Rockbox. The Rockbox firmware can be installed on nearly all devices from the first generation iPod to the iPod Classic 6th and 7th generation. The exceptions here are iPods without click wheels and iPod Nanos after the second generation. The setup and installation for Rockbox is super straightforward. You just need to use the Rockbox utility application, select to install a bootloader, stock up on some themes, and hit install. In a matter of minutes, your iPod is ready to go. The first thing that I do when I boot into a new installation of Rockbox is change the theme to something a bit more familiar. You can find around 83 games in Rockbox under the Plugins section. Some of the games like Quake require additional files, but there are already a ton of games that will work right out of the box. All right, all right, all right, we're finally here, Game Boy. But you'll notice that Rockbox didn't have a Game Boy emulator game or an app somewhere that we have to launch. And that's because it's built right into the file manager. We can just go right up to the top of the menu, click on files, go into the Game Boy Color folder that I've created, which has a bunch of games that I've already preloaded, select a game, and we're good to go. Any iPod with a color LCD screen already has the Game Boy emulator preloaded on Rockbox. The controls take a bit of getting used to, and they require you to tap on areas of the click wheel. For the D-pad, tapping menu is for up, play pause is for down, back for left, and forward for right. The area between menu and forward can be tapped for the A button. The area between back and menu can be tapped for the B button. The space between back and play pause is for select. And between play pause and forward is for start. Complex enough for you? Overall performance is not great. Link's Awakening doesn't perform terribly, but it's not fully playable because you can't hit two buttons at the same time which means you can't do something like walk around and use your shield at the same time. On the other hand, I think Tetris is actually a pretty great experience. The tap controls are pretty intuitive and make it really easy to move around. It's not perfect and you can definitely have accidental presses, but it's a lot more straightforward than the EA version. But it was the concept of being able to play a Pokemon game on my iPod that really drew me into this project. 
and Pokemon really was the best game I found for the Game Boy on an iPod. It's casual, not very precision based, and drops in frame rates won't ruin the experience in any way. It's a bit of a pain if you want to give your Pokemon nicknames, so maybe just skip that part. I've also found that save states work pretty well, so you can quickly jump right back into a session. Mods and custom firmware can breathe new life into the iPod you probably forgot about, or maybe a reason to pick one up. Is the iPod a viable Game Boy emulator? Not really, this is definitely more of just a fun project than something I would imagine you would use every day. But going through the process of loading my iPod up with all these extras is definitely a ton of fun. Even if you don't plan to use your iPod as a daily driver Game Boy emulator, Rockbox boasts quite a bit of power, especially when it comes to things like untethering your device from iTunes and allowing tons of more file types. There's a ton more that Rockbox can do for other iPods too, like play videos on an iPod Nano, although I wouldn't actually want to do that myself, or make your iPod video interface look more like the 6th and 7th generation iPod Classic. The fact that there really is no risk in bricking your device makes these upgrades low stress even if they could be a little bit time consuming to get everything just right. So let me know what you think. Could you play through all of Pokemon using just the click wheel? Did you have games on the iPod when they were originally released? How about iPod mods? Do you have an upgraded iPod? Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next videos, and thanks for watching!